Since 2015, more than a million people crossed these blue waters of the Aegean Sea, hoping to find asylum in Europe. The traces of their journeys are still visible here on the island of Lesbos in Greece. Thousands of discarded life jackets and abandoned boats litter the shore. The numbers of arrivals have come down but have not stopped. Close to 7,000 have arrived by sea to Greece this year so far. Those coming will be taken to this Moria camp on the island. They will wait here for months until their asylum requests are processed. The camp is constantly over capacity. Some live in cramped containers, others in tents without heating over winter months. Madina Mandaseri is a 21-year-old Afghan policewoman specializing in domestic violence. She has to wait here for seven months until her interview date and more until she receives a decision. In the Moria camp, we are like a prison. We cannot go uh, the other uh, the other place. I want to tell for the European Europe uh, country, uh, please accept the refugee uh, because every refugee uh, is uh, the very bad situation in here. European politicians have been discussing ways to take off the burden from border countries like Greece by allocating refugees to other countries. But as the mood in some political capitals changed, an EU common migration policy is out of reach. After two or three years, we haven't managed to agree on a common, efficient migration and asylum policy. We did everything in the European Parliament. We adopted all the necessary legislation for better management of migration, for safe outside borders. But the EU governments haven't agreed on the common migration policy. So I would really like to be very critical towards certain governments and it's having an impact on the political situation in Lesbos. The village of Moria sits right next to the camp. Many residents here are unhappy with its presence right next to their homes. Our problem here is that we don't want any refugee or migrant to bother us. We are Christian Orthodox, you are Muslim, I didn't come to your land to destroy it. Since the rest of the European Union states don't share the burden, yes, we have to shut our borders. Why should they all come to Greece? Fake stories like these of migrants destroying crosses on the island, throwing icons into the sea, and eating dogs on the beach have helped to spread anti-migrant sentiment on the island and in Greece in general. Local journalists have been fighting for truth. All of the climate that has been created, as you can understand, the spreading of fake news and the overall anti-immigration climate of course is going to influence the way people vote in the EU elections because it touches a part of the voters on the island. All the fake news come from political groups close to the right-wing New Democracy and the neo-Nazi party Golden Dawn. Fisherman Kostas Pinteris has participated in rescue efforts, saving refugees from sinking boats. He is disappointed with Europe's response. The European Union is doing nothing. They're just sitting back and watching the refugees struggle for survival. We fought to save lives here, but others are fighting to destroy the lives of the refugees. There are fewer boats arriving to Greece now, and the reason is this. The EU-Turkey deal has meant that boats stopped coming against the controversial promise of accession talks and billions in aid. Turkey now hosts in excess of 3 million Syrians. Nala, a 50-year-old widow from Damascus, is one of them. She's supporting her four children and two grandchildren working 12-hour days in this kitchen producing traditional Syrian food. Her son, 14-year-old Ayad, is working too at the pastry shop. 
he does not speak Turkish and cannot go to school. Together they fetch around the equivalent of 300 euros a month. She supports her 19-year-old daughter and her baby. Her daughter lost her firstborn during the war. Her husband left her when he could not find a job. And her elder daughter too, with her three-year-old son. Her husband was killed in the war. Nala says she has heard about aid coming from Europe, but has not received any help. Life in Turkey is really too difficult. I cannot describe what I'm really suffering. We go out to work and come back later to work at home feeding our children. We want to meet at night, but we cannot do that at all, just on the weekend, and sometimes I have to work on the weekend overtime to be able to pay the rent, to pay my debts. The European Union's assistance to Turkey is its biggest humanitarian project. Six billion euros is being spent over four years on education, health and humanitarian assistance. These Syrian refugees are attending Turkish lessons in a school in Istanbul to help them find jobs. This is paid for by the European Union and their 50,000 students like them around the country. In the beginning, it was very important to provide immediate humanitarian assistance, health, I mean, med medicine, food, shelter. Now, I think we need to see how we can help these people to stand on their feet so, so they do not fully, they do not no, no longer depend on humanitarian support. But many, like Noah Hamza, a 25 year old cameraman, don't see their future here. He used to work with the famous white helmets. It took six attempts for them to be able to cross into Turkey and they succeeded a year ago, just before the birth of their son. Here in Turkey, the Syrian people work all the time for nothing, the salary not enough for living. He has applied for asylum at the French embassy. This was the only legal way for him to try to reach Europe. This was seven months ago, and he has not received a response yet. There in Europe, we can build our future. I want to study filmmaking, but here I cannot, I just have to work. If I work, I cannot study. If I study, I cannot eat. There are many things I couldn't do here. Turkey for me is only a station. And it is for most of Syrians. It's just a station. The European Union is the biggest investor in Turkey. And despite EU's broken promises on accession talks and calls to freeze them entirely, Erdogan is holding his side of the promise. But many are finding it morally questionable. We see a clear deterioration of the human rights situation. Because of the situation inside Turkey, we now see 500% increase of Turkish asylum seekers coming to European countries asking for asylum, and most of them even get it because it's not safe for them to go back to Turkey. So it's quite cynical how on one hand we say Turkey is safe enough for refugees, but unfortunately it's no longer safe enough for many Turkish citizens. These images seem to have faded from the memory of European voters, with migration no longer among top concerns in pre-election polls. But the European politicians working on migration admit that the next crisis is a question of when, not if, unless a common European response is found soon.